Morning, Tiffany. Morning, Ronald. Morning, Nika. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome once again to Tuesday Bible Talk Devotional. It's, it's a brisk morning. I pray everybody is somewhere where they're warm and comfortable. And uh, I pray that this morning we'll, we'll hear the word, we'll receive the word, and it'll move us closer and closer to where we want to be in our relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, before we get God going, uh, Let's just stop for a minute and and in consideration of those who uh, have suffered loss and in one case is uh, somebody who is lost and those who are ill and uh, sorrowfully I say that we lost uh, Sister Alice Lee uh, just recently so let's keep her family in our prayers and keep them lifted up and 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 be careful with their hearts. Uh, we know that Sister Willie Taylor lost her son, so let's be mindful of her and take care of her in our prayers and thoughts and considerations. We know that our own Pastor Chris and Sister Taisha, Sister Taisha lost her sister, Tanisha, so let's make sure we uh, keep them lifted up in prayer and love and well wishes. And on a personal level, my sister and my niece are both battling uh, the COVID Thing. My sister Mimi and my niece Nyla are battling COVID, so if you would, uh, just pray for, for pray for them and pray for my family, and let's let's keep them lifted up in, in in our well wishes. All right. Well, let us pray. Dear gracious Father, thank you for your grace, mercy, love, and forgiveness, Father. In your testing, Father, thank you that you trust us enough to receive your instructions, to receive your love, to receive your graciousness, and keep on moving even when times seem tough. We thank you for the cold days, the warm days, the hot days, the rainy days, the sunny days. We thank you for every day, Father, because we know in those days come your blessings. As we move about this land and we say we are seeking a change, Father, let's make sure that we don't get too ahead of ourselves because we don't ever want you to change. Your grace is everlasting. You remain the same each and every day, Father. And I pray, I pray that that sameness will lift us if we'll let it. It'll lift us and move us to greater places, to greater planes, to receive all of your grace, mercy, and love. It is in Jesus' name that I pray this day, and I thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. <clears throat> well, folks, hey, Pastor Taylor, how you doing today? Hey, Miss Wise. Well, anyway. Uh, I, I was privileged to sit in the presence uh, Sunday while Pastor gave a, a, a wonderful sermon 
on Thanksgiving and praise, and I, I it it moved me to a place because it it, it convicted me actually, and for lack of a better word, uh, I had to address my personal misunderstandings uh, of the of the grace of of, of God and in 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 his in his doing sometimes, uh, so. I, I, I was looking for a scripture and I found a scripture that I might be able to to get the message I think God is trying to send so we can move to a deeper, deeper sense of God's grace, his mercy and and his love, you know, something that rises higher than what we see, because uh, that's when we really have gratitude for the works of God. That's when we really appreciate his grace. That's when we really uh, appreciate his love. So the scripture I came up with uh, comes from John 2, verses 3 through 10. This is the English Standard Version. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now, there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and when the people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine till now. Now, I know we say, well, what, what does that have to do with Thanksgiving and, and, and going to a uh, a higher plane. Well, I, I, I chose this scripture, and you know, this is this is commonly known as Jesus' first noted miracle, a uh, miracle of record. But if if we note in here, okay, a little background, you know, the, the wedding feast in, in those days for the Jewish people, it was about a week. And and to run out of wine would be Oh, just a humiliating social embarrassment. You would become a social pariah uh, amongst your peers, amongst your people, because you did such a poor job of, of hosting your wedding feast. So I want you to understand that uh, Jesus did a great service to these people. He kept them from being embarrassed. He kept them from being shamed by taking care of them. I also want us to note that we're talking about 26 containers of 20 to 30 gallons. He didn't send somebody to the store and say, go get, you know, five of them three liter boxes and they ought to be all right. The swill wine that the, the host was talking about. He did, let's say, 120 to 180 gallons of the best wine for them. He didn't say, go get me two containers, get me five containers, get me three containers, fill them halfway up. He said, go get me six and fill them completely. Now, one of the things in filling them completely, he wanted you to know that there was, no, there was no trickery, that the water was all the way to the top. There was no additive. There was nothing to change these. It was just by his power that these things happened. It was, it was truly a miracle, but... Look at how much he did. Had they been aware of what was going on and they had asked, Lord, or can somebody go get some more wine? How much would they have gotten? But how much more did Christ, our Lord, do for them than they would have done for themselves? How much more did he do for them in this simple matter than their parents would have done? How much more did he do for them without them asking, without their knowledge, than anybody could have thought to do. 
And when I say we need to move to a deeper understanding of God's grace and his love and his mercy for us so that our thanksgiving might be put into the right place, that is what I'm talking about. How much more does God do for us without our knowledge, without our understanding, than we would even do for ourselves? It is the simplest matters. It is those things that we don't count as big. You know, when we start talking about our health and the health of our children and the health of our family, then we turn to God and we get on our knees and we, we pray in intercession or if there's, you know, addictions or or we're broke, or, you know, we're about to get put out, or we lost our job, we turn to God. We're talking about a wedding feast. We're talking about wine, or alcohol. And Jesus cared enough about these people to not, to not allow them to be embarrassed or shamed in the least bit, but actually to make their feast even greater than their understanding. Because he gave them the very best and more copious amounts of the very best than they could ever ask for. That's the Lord and Savior that we have. The God that climbed up on that Christ, that cross because he said, they don't take my life. I give it freely for you. That's the God we serve. Can't we be grateful in that? Aren't we supposed to be grateful in that? And remember, these people... Don't know what's going on, what the Lord is doing. for. They didn't go in prayer and say, oh, Lord, please come and, and do nothing. It was brought to his attention an all-knowing, all-wise, all-powerful, almighty God brought to his attention and he addressed it. Nothing asked. He addressed it better than they ever could have wished for. How many how much has the Lord done for you and you didn't realize it, so you never said thank you? How many times has the favor of God kept you from heartache, from pain, but the, the favor was hidden from you and you thought, I just had good luck. Things just went my way. How many times has Jesus filled the six barrels in your life full of wine and let you keep moving, let you keep celebrating, let you keep staying in the joy of your life and you're never aware of it? How many times has Jesus exalted you just right where you are and you aren't aware of it? And instead of turning around and saying, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord. You patted yourself on the back and said, look at me. We need to, in this season of Thanksgiving, all thanks goes to the Lord because we have done nothing without him. You know, this is a season of love. This is a season of Thanksgiving. This is the season of the Lord. Now, I believe every day, Every moment of every year is a season of the Lord. But if we're going to dedicate something to it, let this season heighten our awareness of just how grateful we ought to be. How thankful we ought to be. How humble we ought to be. And how willing we ought to be to serve somebody else. Do something great for somebody else. Without their knowledge, without them knowing, without the pomp and circumstance, without waiting to be congratulated or thanked or called by people such a wonderful person. Jesus didn't stick around for accolades. He just did what needed to be done to make sure these people were taken care of. How many of us are doing that? Outside of our homes, and I pray we do that in our homes without any thing to move us or to spur us on. But how many of us do that without any outside motivation, without any ulterior motive? How many of us are just willing to serve others? How many of us are willing to wash somebody's feet for no other reason than the love of God and the love of others? 
because that's the lesson Jesus wants us to do. There are a whole lot of great lessons in him turning the water into wine. Outside of somebody saying, see, you could drink because Jesus turned water into wine, so he don't have no problem with it. That, that's not what this is about. This is about his grace, his love, his mercy. He said to his mother, it's not my time yet, yet I care enough. I care enough about this situation to do this great thing in this small matter. How much more is he willing to do for each of us? How many times has he held your hand? How many times has he carried you? How many times? I didn't get that promotion. Oh, man, they, they messed me up. They, it wasn't fair. And then that whole division that got promoted got laid off. And you go, Phew, man, I was lucky. No, that was God. He was filling your barrels full. You're not going to get that promotion because in six weeks, you won't have a job if you move to that place. You're not going to get that promotion because it's going to move you to salaried. And you're going to work 70, 80 hours a week and only get paid for the same 40 you've been getting paid for. So now you're going to move from making what you're making to about $10 an hour for all the hours you make. You won't be properly compensated. You'll miss time with your family. You can't go to church anymore and be in the service of the Lord. You can't go to the football game. You really can't do anything. Your life is just gone. But I want that promotion so bad. And God says no. So stop and consider how many times he's filled your barrel, all six to the top, with only the best. And it is represented in your life every day. Look around yourself. Think about things. Don't compare your life to others. Or you always come up short or you'll be in the wrong place thinking too much of yourself. Never compare your, your life to others. But what you want to do is look at your life for what God is doing in your life. Think about what has he done? What is he doing? And what has he promised he will do? You know, when we get to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God and Jesus Christ for you. You know why he says that? Give thanks in all circumstances. Because we don't know just how much he's doing in our lives. We don't know how many car accidents we were supposed to be in, and God just... Let us go through easy. We don't know how many confrontations were just waiting around the corner for us. And God just said, I, I'm going to delay you for a minute and that's going to pass you by. We don't know all the things that God is doing for us. We're anticipating. We're praying. We're hoping. We're wanting for God to do more in our lives. But we're not thanking God for the things he's already doing in our lives. Let's take this, this season of thanksgiving, this season of love, and slow ourselves down and be thankful. Go back and listen to Pastor Taylor's Sermon Sunday. He'll talk to you about thankfulness. Go to Psalms 100. It'll tell you about thankfulness. But reach inside yourself and look at your life. Look at, look at where you could have been. Look at what could have happened. Look at some of the stuff that did happen that God moved you through. And thank God. James 1 and 2 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. See, there are things that happen in our life. We just got to count it joy. Because if we look at it on the other end, we go, whew, I'm sure glad. I'm so glad that happened to me. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. That's when we're in touch and relationship with God. But sometimes all we say is, I was so lucky. I wasn't like them. I was lucky. You weren't lucky. Luck has nothing to do with this. That is the favor of God on your life. That is his light shining in your life. But take that light and reflect that on others so that God might be glorified. That's what God wants to happen. See, sometimes... 
the rough things, the tough things, the things we don't want to endure happen to us so that God might be glorified by our lives. But if we don't give him glory, then the rocks will have to shout. I don't want to see no rock shout. I want to see us shout. I want to see us singing a song. I want us telling about the goodness of our Lord. And that's what he wants from us. So in this little lesson, it's not about the wine. It's about the glory of God. It's about his grace, his mercy, his love, his care for us. And his want for us as a community of his saints to do that amongst each other to make sure that we're taken care of. See, if, if the president don't take care of us, if the Senate don't take care of us, if the Congress don't take care of us, if the governor won't take care of us, we can take care of each other. That's the secret. God put us here to take care of each other. As he takes care of each of us, he wants us to take care of each other. So let's just slow it down. Be grateful. Let's stop and praise. Praise him. Truly praise him. Reach down in yourself and say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. But understand what he's done for you. You can do it for yourself. Worship him in spirit and in truth. You don't have to tell a lie. In spirit and in truth. Come to him clean. I remember years ago in a Sunday school lesson, I said, God just wants you to come to him clean. If you are a liar, if you're dishonest, if he already knows, come to him clean. Come to him clean. That's the way you worship him in spirit and in truth. Going to him clean and thanking him for all he's done despite of who you are, in spite of who you are, in spite of what you've done. Let's thank him. And more than anything, in this season, if you have, if you don't have, if you're not getting, if you don't get, you know, if you're running short, whatever it is, be thankful in everything. Because God is growing something great. And if you will be still and know that he is Lord and grow where he's planted you, I'm telling you, something beautiful is going to happen for all of us. That's his promise. That's not me just spouting off words that's his promise that's the lord we serve many of you have seen the grace of the lord the love of the lord the wonderful things he'll do for you if you'll just trust him and know so let's take this time let's take this season to thank god let him know how much we love him let him know how much we appreciate him Reach down inside of ourselves. Don't be ashamed. Never be ashamed to tell God, thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You are worthy of my praise. You are worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of everything. Dear gracious Father, we stand united. We stand together in saying, thank you, Lord. There's nothing this world can present that won't allow our lips, our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our very beings to move to thanksgiving for all that you are, all that you do, all that you have promised, Lord. I'm not going to stay here too long, Father, but I just want to say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, folks, thank you. I love you. Be blessed. But more than anything, slow down and thank God for the wonderful life and the wonderful person that you are. Amen. Thank you. Y'all have a great week.